Hello and welcome. You're watching Coronavirus Facts vs. Myths. I'm Rishika Barwa. India has reported 35,178 new coronavirus cases in the last 24 hours. This is nearly 40% higher than India's COVID cases in the previous 24 hours. We've also reported over 440 deaths in this time period. But the active cases in the country have fallen to 3.67 lakhs. This is good news because it's the lowest active caseload that India has seen in over 140 eight days. Active cases account for around 1.1% of the total number of coronavirus cases. In fact, even if you look at the recovery rate, it is the highest it's been since March 2020. 97.5% of people are recovering from uh, COVID at this stage. But let's take a look at the vaccinations. Now, around 55 lakh doses have been administered in the last 24 hours. However, at the current rate, only 36% of India's adult population will be fully vaccinated by the end of the year, as opposed to the government's own target of vaccinating at least 60%. So there is still a daily shortfall of around 4.9 million vaccines a day. We need to be vaccinating 10 point um, four lakh people on a daily uh, we need to be vaccinating over a crore of people now on a daily basis but let's take a look at the cases now cases have been hovering around 30 to 40 thousand the R rate also rose crossed one indicating the onset of a third wave but it appears to have plateaued in the last five days what does this really mean we'll ask our panel of expert doctors but let's just understand another important phenomena that's emerging in Maharashtra at the moment, something which is perhaps a warning sign and has raised more questions than answers at the moment. There are 76 cases of the Delta Plus variant that have been reported in Maharashtra. Five of these 76 uh, uh, cases, five of these 76 patients died because of the Delta Plus variant. This variant is also challenging the efficacy of the vaccines because 10 out of the 76 patients who were infected with the Delta Plus variant in Maharashtra had in fact taken both shots of the coronavirus vaccine. So these were breakthrough infections. And what experts are noticing in Mumbai is also worrying in a certain sense because there's been a rise in symptomatic COVID. Experts say that there were about 15 to 20% patients who were symptomatic in the previous strain of COVID, but because of Delta Plus, there are almost 50% people who are now suffering from symptomatic COVID. So what does this really mean? Well, uh, to answer some of these questions, we have Dr. Anita Matthew, infectious disease specialist uh, from the Fortis Hospital in Mulund with us. We also have Dr. Ishwar Gilada, consultant in HIV infectious diseases and Secretary General Organized Medicine Academic Guild joining us. Thank you both very much uh, for being with us. Dr. Gilada, to you first. Um, and my first question is actually about the cases in India right now which are plateauing in a certain sense. Uh, you know, we saw a dip in cases yesterday, 25,000. You know, uh, there's been, of course, a 40% rise in this last 24 hours. How are you currently looking at India's caseload? Many had anticipated that we would be seeing a third wave by this time. Rishika, uh, whenever you see cases of Sunday on Monday, you feel a relief that the cases are low. Again, on Tuesday, they are rising. Rising. So basically, we should not look at cases on Sunday, Monday. Uh, they are different on those days. Hmm. So uh, we we are expecting third wave, but it may be after a month, maybe after six weeks. We don't know. No one knows when the third will be there. And third wave will be entirely depending on the behavior of people uh, and also the uh, speed of vaccination. So uh, if we look at uh, uh, zero surveillance data, already 67% uh, uh, people are uh, infected, possibly infected in the country and maybe around 10 12 percent are vaccinated so in a population which is uh, uh, partially infected and partially vaccinated the third wave is going to be uh, smaller than the second wave it cannot be bigger than the third wave doctor however yes yeah please please make your point yeah however if there is a, another variant which is going to come uh, like currently we have delta which is omnipresent everywhere almost 95 percent 97 percent people are infected with delta variant Delta plus is still a variant of interest, not variant of concern. We have not seen much of a spike in Delta vari uh, plus variant uh, cases and there are not many deaths and not many infections accordingly. So we, we cannot say that third wave will be very big hmm. and we will be overwhelmed like we were overwhelmed in second wave. Uh, Dr. Gilada, very brief question to you at the moment and that question is, 
you know about the fact that we have the delta variant which is dominant here in india there are cases of delta plus our vaccination rate is among one of the lowest i mean look at our uh, percentage of population that's fully vaccinated it's only 8.8% at the current rate we're going to pass just about 30% uh, vaccination how is it that cases are not spiking despite the fact that our country is open the economy is fully open everywhere there are very you know very uh, little areas that are actually locked down um, and there is a delta plus i mean look at what's happening in the us and compare it to what's happening in india how do you make sense of this no one sense is that covid science is such a science no one can understand fully so a lot of people make their different uh, projections and assumptions secondly if we have already 67% people are infected and they are from all over the country not only one particular part of the country hmm. urban rural everywhere so we are closer to the herd immunity in that sense maybe some areas are 40% infection some areas are 80% infection but as a nation as lot of states we are closer to the herd immunity and okay. that's the reason possibly that cases are not spiking in that number big number Okay, that's very interesting, and let me also, uh, uh, you know, get a perspective from Dr. Anita Matthew. Dr. Matthew, I want to just focus on what's happening in Maharashtra with the Delta Plus cases: seventy-six cases, five deaths because of the Delta Plus variant. But there are new symptoms and a lot of breakthrough infections that one is seeing bases this sample size. Uh, so this is a very small sample size to really yes. talk about how good or bad the the variant is for the time being. Uh, what we do know is that uh, with a couple of breakthrough infections, are something that is going to be along with any vaccine. So, I, and uh, to mutate is a basic nature of the vaccine. So, um, whether this particular variant of interest that we are talking in terms of becomes a variant of concern would come in through only in the next couple of months, as we have an increasing number, which I hope not, of these infections coming up. But as of now, if you look at the situation in Mumbai, Maharashtra, it's not overwhelming. So, no, it's uh, not overwhelming. Yeah. But my 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 point is that does the Delta Plus variant uh, raise a red flag? Look at what's happening in Maharashtra with experts saying that there's a rise in symptomatic COVID as a result of Delta Plus. Uh, so there were fifteen uh, to twenty percent people who had symptomatic COVID in Mumbai, for instance, from the previous so strains. That's gone up to fifty-four percent. The number of cases and the number of patients that we are getting in, they are not any different from what we were getting in about a month. Okay. So uh, I wouldn't say that we are seeing overwhelmingly more number of patients with lot of symptoms. No, that's not the case. In fact, uh, uh, we have a, a very stable ward at this particular time point, which is uh, you know what not was the case about a month back. Hmm. So I would say the number of cases that you are seeing right now within the city of Mumbai and the symptomatology is not really very different from what it was okay. about a month back. So you're saying that there's no cause for concern, no cause for alarm just yet. But we, no, we shouldn't be alarmed at this particular time point. We need to be vigilant. We need to figure out what exactly is happening. We need more of genomic studies to be able to. We need to uh, be vigilant. Uh, really, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes, we need to be vigilant, but Dr. not alarmed. Doctor Gilada, how do you look at the Delta Plus variant? Do you think that India needs to be concerned? You know. Uh, uh dr matthew raises a very important point that let's be vigilant let's watch out for it because we are seeing breakthrough infections it's 10 out of 76 so it's a very small number uh but you know that's also because the sample size was very small no i think uh, rishika they have tested 13000 samples out yes. of which they found 68 positive so it's 0.5% positivity and that is very very low and secondly we we feel concern about something which is not to be concern and we neglect those things which are to be uh, of of much greater concern for example the speed of vaccination is very low and if we don't have that speed of vaccination we should have thought of out of box that for example if 67% people are already infected possibly infected then you do one drop blood test you find out who is igg positive hmm. igg positive not to be given vaccine and vaccinate other people so we But can work on the shortage of vaccination by having a proper uh, vaccination system which okay. we are not following okay. so we are vaccinating randomly everybody all right no you, it's it's a very fair point that you make about the pace of vaccination but my question is that do you think basis this data and this is a limited sample size that's a disclaimer that we are putting out time and time again but uh, basis this data do you think the delta plus variant could potentially cause a lot of breakthrough infections we're seeing it with the delta uh, variant in the united states at the moment the level of breakthrough infections is quite high in the us 
Rishika, you are right. Uh, scientifically, we should feel concerned, but in general, we should not feel concerned. Okay. Why I am saying scientifically? Because Delta variant, Delta variant was only one percent in January 2021, and that one percent became seven percent, twenty-two percent, forty-four percent, seventy-two percent. Now, hundred percent or ninety-eight percent in uh, entire COVID scenario. Hmm. So, if one percent can become hundred percent, even zero point five percent can become uh, nearly fifty, forty percent also. So, we should feel scientifically concerned. But in general, we should not have any kind of panic reaction in people because what happens currently is the health science communication has become so loose. Hmm. People Google around and they feel concerned about something which we should not okay. concern them. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Doctor Matthew, second, very, second very quickly, point. the would, last uh, word to you on vaccine efficacy and Delta Plus. I know enough is not known about it just yet, but if you were to just look at this data that is available at the moment. Uh, what do you make of breakthrough infections? Are you concerned? Ten out of seventy-six people who tested positive for Delta Plus were fully vaccinated. Are you concerned? I would be to some extent concerned the fact about the fact that yes, there is a breakthrough, but as I said, that is a norm. Out of a uh, hundred people who take a vaccine of two doses of vaccine, there are still going to be about fifteen uh, to twenty percent who will land up with an infection. Okay. So that's something that is known. That's what is called as a vaccine efficacy, right? So Covishield has an efficacy after two doses of close to about seventy-nine to eighty, eighty-five percent at the max. So I would expect some breakthrough to come through. So I'm not really alarmed at that particular okay. thing, as long as the patients don't translate into becoming uh, uh, severely ill. Also, is a possibility, but as long as people are not dying. I think we should be. And I think what you said uh, is the note that we should end it on that there is no cause of alarm at the moment, but we have yes. to keep our guard up. We have to be vigilant against any such, uh, you know, telltale sign. So I think that is extremely important. And of course, like Dr. Gilada said, we have to just vaccinate, vaccinate, vaccinate. That is uh, really the most important thing. Thank you both very much uh, for joining us. Follow the COVID appropriate behavior. Sorry. And follow the COVID appropriate. And follow behavior. COVID appropriate behavior. Yes, absolutely. Thank you both very much yes, uh, for joining us. I want to shift our focus from what's happening in India to what's happening in the United States because it is extremely worrying to see the Delta variant causing a huge surge in infections in the U.S. 1.33 lakh new COVID cases in the last 24 hours. The Delta variant is also leading. to breakthrough infections which potentially means that the us which has an overall vaccination rate of 50% which means 50% of the united states population is fully vaccinated yet in six states breakthrough infections account for 18 to 28% of cases in the recent weeks is this perhaps the reason why the united states is now looking to expedite booster shots i mean look at that graphic up on your screens the us has uh, 50% of its population which is double vaccinated fully vaccinated compare that to india it's only 8.8% yet the us is seeing a huge surge in cases and a worrying rise in reinfections as well dr nishchay mishra assistant professor epidemiology at the columbia university medical center joins us thanks very much dr mishra for speaking with ndtv how are you looking at the impact of the delta strain on the us numbers going forward so i don't think that is the the main reason is delta itself yeah of course delta is not as uh, the vaccines which we are using they are not as efficacious uh, to the delta variant In, in in compare to what they were with the original uh, virus strain but like the breakthrough infections are increasing at this moment because many people who have taken the vaccine in early january or february they have like the waning antibodies not only against the delta variant against the, all the variants even the original strain and since their efficacy is little weaker against the delta variant that's why we are seeing the more and more breakthrough infections um not only in america around the world but since americans mostly they have taken the mrna based vaccines and uh, pfizer and uh, pfizer and moderna yes. they're still showing very good uh, protection against the serious illness okay. or hospitalization but you are acknowledging you are acknowledging doctor that there is a rise in breakthrough infections does that mean that vaccine immunity is waning and do you think that vaccines need to therefore be tweaked to respond to new emerging strains in the nature there is no hard immunity against the respiratory viruses okay they always keep coming it's not like we get protected for always uh, only one thing like the measles is the virus which give us lifetime immunity 
but that virus goes to the blood stream. Most of these viruses doesn't go to the blood stream. They, that means not non-baromic phase. So they, we get the respiratory illness and virus also evolving with us all the time. So the variant what we see today, if we develop a new vaccine that is more uh, effective to the delta, alpha, gamma, beta, lambda, in the future there will be something new. These vaccines will not be as efficacious to that. That's what happened in many years in the influenza. So influenza you see like a flu season comes in, every year different kind of cocktails has to be given. And that depends on the geographical location, that depends on the community, that depends on the country. Hmm. Well, well that's, that's very interesting because, I mean, obviously, there is a lot of onus on people to follow COVID-appropriate behavior. The previous doctors on the show also reiterated that. But what about booster shots for the immunocompromised in the U.S.? Now, is this a response, A, to the surge of the Delta variant? And how do you, uh, you know, look at this whole argument of some countries like the United States planning to give booster shots uh, to their population versus some countries still scrambling for, you know, even one shot of the vaccine? Uh, the thing is, like, the booster shot for the immunocompromised patients, is, is that's very, very important. Okay. Uh, I personally work on that field, like, the looking for immunity in the immunocompromised patient and then the severity of illness in those patients. So, in compared to, like, healthy population where they got vaccinated, and they develop like good amount of antibodies after first dose. I'm talking about Pfizer and Moderna, not other vaccines. Uh, the only 17% immunocompromised patient can develop the antibodies. And they, they once they get the infected or they get the reinfected, the their illness severity is very high. So mm. for them, there shouldn't be any question if they need to get a booster shot or not. Talking about booster shot for rest of uh, community, Think about it. If the vaccine is not effective after six, eight, ten months hmm. uh, after the second dose with the circulating variants, so I will consider these new population or new cohort is a non-vaccinated individuals. Right. Well, that's an interesting way to look at it. Thanks very much, Doctor, for joining us with all those updates from the US. We're going to slip into a very short break, but Dr. Gilada will be back with us on the other side as we answer your questions on the coronavirus vaccine. Stay with us. Welcome back to our special campaign, Vaccinate India, in partnership with Google. We're discussing questions you may be Googling about the coronavirus vaccine. And Dr. Ishwar Gilada, consultant in HIV, in HIV and infectious diseases, and Secretary General of the Organized Medicine Academic Guild, is with us to answer your questions. Dr. Gilada, first and foremost, about the effectiveness of the coronavirus vaccine. And the reason I ask this question is because we are increasingly seeing reports of breakthrough infections, even fully vaccinated people getting coronavirus. So what does that tell us about the effectiveness of the vaccine currently? You see, uh, if we look at currently Delta virus, which is uh, Delta variant, which is more prevalent, then the effect effectiveness of the vaccine with one dose is protecting only 31% people and with two doses around 69% people. But that is only for infection. But if you look at the severe illness or hospitalization, that is with two doses, it protects you 93%. So, hospitalization, severe infection, protection is very good and from death almost 98 to 99 percent. So, uh, people should not be bothered about particularly vaccination which is common in India, hmm. uh, whether it is Covishield or Covaxin and both are working on Delta variant. Okay, so both are effective against Delta variant. I think that's very heartening. But the other question is how long does this effectiveness with two doses last? I mean, how long does vaccine induced immunity last in protecting you against COVID given the fact that so many countries around the world are now talking about booster shots? You see, basically, uh, it may work for 8 to 10 months or 12 months. If you mm -hmm. compare the immunity, uh, better immunity is uh, or lasting immunity is there from natural infection. So okay. those who are already COVID infected, they may have a lasting immunity, okay. which may be more than one uh, one year. But if uh, uh, those people are vaccinated, then even with one shot of vaccine, that their immunity may last for two to three years also. Now, secondly, what the entire world is doing is only doing uh, neutralizing antibody tests. And then they say that the vaccine's efficacy, efficacy has gone down. But there are a lot of other antibodies, cell mediated immunity, which is not checked at all. Hmm. So immunity may be there. Immunity may not be there to protect you from infection, but immunity will be there to protect you from severe illness or hospitalization or death. 
so i think at this stage hmm. uh, india is very good at looking at forward looking strategies but very poor in implementing so i i always call we have a, a, a diary of uh, thoughts and constipation of implementation so if we talk about uh, booster doses now hmm. we don't have first dose we don't have second dose i think we are talking too much so booster dose even those who are vaccinated like us doctors in january and february hmm. we may require in 2022 only not now okay. america or other countries they talk because they have a lot of stock uh, buffer stock of vaccine and they want to use it before the vaccines expire okay so they well, have enough well i think that's that's a very interesting uh, a very interesting thought that you have about you know how long this effectiveness lasts and most importantly i think what you say that your antibody test doesn't determine the level of protection that you have i think that's very important because people really take that test very seriously and want to know whether they are protected or not but the other important question is about mrna vaccines how do these vaccines work are they better than the other vaccines because the efficacy data of these vaccines has been higher or better than some of the other vaccines You see, the foundation of mRNA vaccine was at that time people used to think that it is only at the receptor binding domain the uh, virus is active, and uh, therefore we should block it. And therefore, mRNA is created only for receptor binding domain, whereas all other vaccine, uh, particularly vaccines which are used in India, they are uh, full vaccine. So right. they they work at all the domains, and whether it is a S domain, N domain, they they work at all the domain. Hmm. Uh, 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 Annual of uh, nuclear capsid. and therefore what we get immunity here with covid shield or covaxin is better than mrna as in current scenario okay. and that's the uh, uh, main reason why delta is failing in uh, mrna people and uh, you, okay. i lost my own teacher dr kapila who taught me uh, uh, alibi of uh, infection disease he was fully vaccinated with uh, uh, mrna vaccine and he died in india uh, getting delta virus infection so right. possibly uh, we are better protected against uh, uh, the uh, delta or the uh, uh, some other uh, kappa etc uh, with our vaccine than the mrna vaccine all right i think that's a very that's very important the points that you make on the efficacy of the mrna vaccine especially against delta and how that's linked to the surge we're seeing in the united states thanks very much dr gilada for joining us